company in September of 2017. I am a former auditor and collector for the Internal Revenue Service. I have over nine and a half years of experience and I started my company <clears throat> because I just listened to people tell me about their problems all day financially and they were overwhelmed. Um, unfortunately, I spoke to some people who were suicidal due to owing um, large balances to the IRS and people were overwhelmed. They just were clueless and had no idea how to get out of the situations because everyone knows if you have an installment agreement, um, it, it starts off as an assessed balance of let's say 3000 and you could easily end up on uh, five, $6,000. And you're like, well, heck, I couldn't pay the 3000 So now how am I supposed to pay the, the six or the 7000 So I wanted to help people. I wanted to help people sleep at night. I wanted to provide an out for people. So I created Purpose and Passion Tax Company. And the purpose was to help people resolve their issues with the IRS. Along the way, I realized that people also wanted me to prepare their income tax returns. And so that's where I started preparing income tax returns. But initially, I only wanted to resolve um, tax issues such as balance dues or um, just different if people had levies, if they have liens, um, if people were receiving collection letters. I wanted to help them avoid the actual collection process. And so that's why I created Purpose and Passion Tax Company. So I help people sleep at night. Um, you are my most, so I have a guest with me. Her name is Dee Dee, um, the wonderful Miss Dee Dee. And I help people all the time. Unfortunately, um, like the Bible, um, when Jesus heals the 10, lepers, um, the 10 people who have leprosy. Only one came back to say thank you. And so Miss Dee Dee is my one who comes back to say thank you. And she is not ashamed of the relief that she received. She's not ashamed of the help that she received. And she's like, oh my gosh, like you're amazing. People need to know about you. Like, what are we going to do? We need to get you on the map. And I'm like, honored. But at the same time, I'm like, I don't know, like I do what I do. Um, I'm honest, I'm straightforward. Um, I don't play games. Um, I feel like a lot of people have already been ripped off. So like, I'm not here for that. That's just not who I am. My integrity doesn't allow me to be that person. But I, I wanna help people. Like I really do wanna help people. Um, yes, you pay me for me to help you, but I really do help you too. So. Miss Dee Dee, um, you want to tell your story? You can tell your own story. I'll let you tell your story. Okay. Well, hello, everyone. Uh, let's see. Well, a lot of people that know that I, back in uh, the late 90s, I've worked with the police department. I have had my own group phones for the state of California. Uh, I've been in the military, so I've had a lot of uh, careers. So I had group homes back in the uh, late 90s, early 2000s, where I started, um, things started to roll, everything was fine, but then you get into a hole because what happened was they wanted to have a wraparound program for foster care. So that means they were having the uh, group homes were going down. So I had an RCL 11 group home. So at that time, everything was going fine until it got down to a few kids and then paying out your, your staff people and then things like that started coming into part. So at the end of the day, I started owing taxes. So it ended up being quite a bit amount of taxes. It was, let's just make it over $100,000 worth of taxes. And this was over a 10 year period. So um, those things come, my people and my workers uh, came first. So in that case, when I still tried to hold on to all the kids, because that was my, one of my gifts is, is the gift of help. So I wanted to help those who could not help themselves. And that's always been a passion of mine too, as helping uh, the other person. So at the end of that, I was going to a person who were doing my taxes. I had a, quite a few people doing my taxes, but it still did not erase me getting my own taxes for my job. Um, from under my name and getting it resolved. 
So it came to a point where I ended up closing my group homes. So I still had the taxes to pay off. And that was actually under my name. Um, although the license, it still came from under my name. So I was just in much of a need. And the person uh, who did my taxes actually gave me KK's, that's what I call her, KK, her number to help relieve that. Because I was one of those not sleep at night, uh, getting the letters from the IRS. And, you know, I didn't want my money being withheld. I didn't want anything going on in my homes. So I reached out and those who do know me know I don't reach out often because I'm always giving. So uh, hoping that uh, this person could help me and she did. So we met, let's see, I called her and she was very forthwith, which is great because that's what I understand. Just don't just shoot from the hip. So she did and we met uh, in, where did we meet KK? We met at, at Starbucks? I would say it was a Starbucks, but I don't Starbucks. recall if it was a Starbucks out my way or if it was a Starbucks out We your met way. in the middle. We met in the middle. Remember, because you had your son. <laughs> Every day? Yes, that was oh, it. We God. met with your son. Your son was there, so I met your son too. So we met and we talked about maybe an hour. I just told her what was going on and she said she could do it. So I had to trust that. So being as she gave me what her background was with the IRS, so obviously she knows, being an auditor, <laughs> what I was going through on the other side. So uh, we got together maybe a week later. She told me what I had to get. And of course, I have everything in order. So I gave her everything that she needed. Um, we met that week. I would say she had it typed up and ready maybe a couple weeks later because she is busy. So she has all these other clients having all kinds of other issues that she's trying to resolve. I wasn't the only one, but she did treat me like I was the only one. So she was very, very kind, very kind and very understanding. It wasn't out to get anybody's money or um, anything like that. She wasn't shady or like some of these other companies. Actually, um, I went to another company that's, I won't say the name that was on the radio and it was a scam. It was a scam. It was after everything, they wanted $800 for here, $700 here, $500, and I see no progress. So that was just God's way of letting me know you're going down the wrong street. So I waited. And then she appeared, and I paid her the amount that she asked me to pay. It wasn't hardly what she was worth at the end of the day. So at the end of the day, when you owe uh, a good amount of money, and you see no way out because you haven't seen a way out in years. And then, you know, God always has a ram in the bush. And so it's just in the nick of time. She showed up. We, we made an agreement. It was a verbal agreement, actually. And within, I would say, 30 days, we had, you had it written up for me. And she I did all the work. time is 30 days. Yep. Yeah. I didn't do anything. She did all the work. We did. Had, we had a lot of uh, dialogue. Um, so we did, she did everything. She typed it up very professional. She knew what it needed. Um, all I had to do is go out to her house, which was great. Anybody knows KK, she's a taco person. She loves her tacos. <laughs> so very, very heartwarming when I came into her house, very warming. Uh, uh, we talked with her son, like he was my own, met the little dog and we had a very nice time, very, very open young lady, very open. Um, I really like when we started talking about other things that was outside of taxes, which you don't even talk about that, but she's very, uh, she could be a good friend and very trustworthy. So I appreciate everything she's done. And all I had to do was come there. We, we uh, signed, she had me sign and um, she had my copy and the copy that was supposed to be sent off. Uh, she had the address. She had everything done. All I had to do was mail it off. And I did. Uh, that was the IRS that took forever to get back to me. But um, I think they called me for one one thing, which was... <laughs> I remember being in Wayne Co. grocery shopping when you called. Yes. And so they called me saying I overpaid. Well, I overpaid $25. When in actuality, the cost was $25. 
that's what my offer and compromise was. So all that money, $25. You can't even balance the two. I'm going to so, say, break down, honestly, what, <clears throat> and I realized part of what I do is I do offer affordable tax services. I do that on purpose. But when we honestly look at your balance and what you owed, you didn't even pay me 10% of that. No. Not even close. Not even. To not even close. No, $25. And I thought it was $25 a month. But right. it was just $25. Right. And I was like, I already paid 20 And then that's what happened. I kept sending, it was $25. So I ended up sending 50 so then they just had to send me a letter back saying, okay, you're offering compromise. It wasn't de denied. I just had another send another addendum to what she had already done. And of course, I never disclosed. I just did it myself and I asked for advice. Um, and I called her again. And next thing I know, a few phone calls from the IRS just asking a few questions. Um, and that was it. And it was accepted. And with them, the reason why it took so long, it was... Ah, it's just been, it was like six months or something like that, but it was no uh, regards to KK or myself. It was just, they are so backed up. And she explained to me, because I kept worrying, KK, I haven't heard anything. I haven't got a letter. I haven't heard anything. And she was just, be patient, just be patient. So again, I had to trust her because I'm just that, I want to answer now. You know, what else do I need to do? And just over time, and within that, within that year, by the time it got back to me, uh, it was sent to the supervisor. She called and asked me a few questions and it's, it was approved on the very first time. It did not have to come back because she was missing paperwork or something wasn't uh, legible or anything like that, very professionally done. And once again, $25 to over a hundred thousand, 25 to over a hundred. You do the work, you do the math, do the math. So, and her friendship is very worthwhile. And it's not because, oh, I can find somebody to do something for me. We clicked when we met, we did, we connected. And um, that was fine. And, and also now she does my taxes. <laughs> so, <laughs> she did my taxes and it wasn't no outrageous price. She did my taxes actually, just like the other person was doing and much better. So now at this point, um, I just have to keep going forward and not oh, That's really just the bottom line. So that is a big relief. So if you're going through anything, any kind of taxes, no matter how far back, if you haven't filed, she can help you get it done and execute it. So I would definitely call her, reach out to her if you have, if you want to sleep, and just take that burden off with, and, and you know, the IRS can be quite uh, intimidating. Right. <laughs> okay. um, so, I mean, I've worked hard for everything that I've had. So I would say, reach out. If you've tried everybody else and everything else, don't give up because there's always someone else out there. And I would suggest that you would call KK. Yeah, because she's, she did. So I'm, um, I'm quite pleased with her, her, her demeanor, her warmth, her, her sincere, her just everything about her or, and she has a lot of integrity. So she's not going to try and get you for any amount of money. If she asks you to charge, just like you would ask anybody, if someone else, you go to any other professional, they charge a price. I was going to say, honestly, based off of your balance, someone, anyone else would have charged you like a $10,000. Yeah. Like, yeah, at least. Yeah, and making payments was like, okay, yeah, and that would have been compared to a hundred. Yeah, you would look at that as, That's okay, I can do that. Like, honestly, rule of thumb is people charge 10% of whatever is owed. If you owe, absolutely. And I was getting the runaround with other companies that said, the big name companies that is out there on the te television, on the radio saying this, I tried them also to no avail because it was just about uh, getting money from you as much as they could, whatever you could. If it was a 800, like I said, 800 there, 
thousand here. Okay, if I have all that to get out and I don't see anything being executed or sent to me or anything like that, you, you gotta show me something. So I just stopped and then I waited and I waited and this came forth. So I'm happy, I'm happy with that. I'm happy with her, very happy with her, very happy. Well, it was a pleasure, honestly, working with you. Um, I think one of the things, so let me ask you this, because sometimes, you know, people, let me, let me say this, and then you can say, you can share as much as you like. Um, people sometimes feel like because they own a home, because they have multiple cars, because they make six figures, because they, um, because they have a retirement account that they're not eligible to have an offer accepted. Right. Per your experience, per mm -hmm. the things that you know you have, and we're not gonna say that, um, would you say that that is a true statement that your offer will not be accepted if you have those things? Or would you say that's a false statement? That's a false statement. No, they might try to look, just because you have all those things, that's what the IRS looks like. I mean, looks at, they look at all the things that you have and why don't you do something or trade in or give back some of those things and maybe you can pay us what they owe. But that is far from the truth as far as when it, when it goes with KK. Um, I didn't have to give up uh, anything that I've had, that I've worked for. I never had to give up, okay, I have to give up um, my car or, or I have to tell them how much my car was worth or um, do I have insurance that I can cash in or anything like that. So that was not even part of it where uh, I think when other people that I had talked to, they asked about my assets and that's not a need to know because that's not what we're talking about. If that was the case, I would trade in my own things and get the money for it. So that's not true. And no matter how much that you have, um, that never even came up. Even with the IRS, when they asked my packet, they never called and asked, well, what do you have that you can sell? or you have all these things, these assets, because they do ask, but it never came up as far as me having to let go of anything or do a bankruptcy. You know, that's the last thing that somebody wants to do is do a bankruptcy, um, but that never came up. So it's not about what you have, it's about keeping what you have, that you work for, what you work for. Yes, so people like you pay me for a service. Um, I have an IRS background for a reason. Um, mm -hmm. And that's honestly what separates me from many of my colleagues in this field. Um, you know, many people speculate about what the IRS is looking at and what the IRS wants or what the IRS expects. I used to be a decision maker for the Internal Revenue Service. So I'm fully aware of what actually is mattering, what's important to the IRS and what they're looking at. And, um, Again, I believe in integrity. I believe in being honest and I believe in helping my client. Um, so had you not been eligible for an offer, I would have told you that. Um, mm -hmm. I've told people that they're not eligible. I start off every pre-offer starts off with a consultation and me finding out information. I have went through consultations with clients and per the information they provided during that consultation, they were ready for an audit. I mean, not an audit. They were ready for an offer. We could do it. <clears throat> and as I'm filling out the information and I'm asking them other questions, I find out somebody has something. I'm like, you didn't tell me this. <laughs> like I asked you. They're like, oh, I forgot. No, we can't forget stuff like this. Like that just made you ineligible. <laughs> so me being me, like you're going to pay me for the amount of work that I've done up until that point. And then I refund them the money, the difference. And I'm like, take that money and submit that to the Internal Revenue Service. Um, just because I know like you're not going to qualify. So there's no reason for us to go through the, the motions when it's a clear blatant, you're not going to qualify. Um, I don't guarantee that your offer is going to be accepted because I don't sit in that position to make that actual decision. But I do know what's important. And so when someone is paying me, again, you're not paying me to have your offer accepted. You're preparing me to complete the paperwork on your behalf and to submit it to the Internal Revenue Service. But if I see that a client is not going to be eligible, like there's not even a 50-50% chance that this is going to be accepted, then that's where I stop it. 
And that's where I issue the person their refund. With you, when I made it to that point, I saw, okay, she basically, like, there's no reason why her offer wouldn't be accepted. And I kept asking you, remember, I don't think she woke up, uh, KK, or I uh, texted KK, is everything okay? Okay, and she's like, stop worrying, because, uh, you know, when I get, I'm a worry board. But um, she made it, and she um, communicated every step of the way. Every time I had a question or anything, she just, and then she would stay in contact with me also asking, have I heard anything? What do I need? I, when I had received my first letter, uh, whatever it was, and I think it was because they had received that extra $25 that I was sending, um, she was like, no, you're not supposed to do that. That was a uh, compromise with $25, which- That was the total. <laughs> that was the total, right. And I kept sending 25 a month. I'm trying to get ahead of the game. There I go, trying to do something that's that stay in my lane, stay in my lane. <laughs> so um, yeah, so she stays in communication more than it's personal with KK, it's personal. So that it's, it's I appreciate that much more because by name, she would know she won't have to do like, oh, well, he'll get back with you. What is your name and number? He'll have to look up your case and hold on just a minute. Let me find who you are. She knows. She knows exactly who you are, the contact and what's important, what you need it. So the answer was always she'll, she'll get it done. So that was, that's what made it personal with me. She never put me off day or night. I guess I act like she didn't have a job. So, because I called her when I was when I needed to talk to her, and she was never harsh or anything like that. But we have a good understanding of each other, and she's a good friend. She's a good friend. That's why she's doing my taxes. <laughs> <laughs> and I would advise anybody else let her do your taxes because it's it's worth it. She does it, so I can I'm relieved that I have somebody that I can trust with my money and my background and things that I have that are personal to me. And she knows what's important to me is my family above all else. It's my family. You never walk over people who've helped you. You never do that. You, it's not too many that's going to be on your side that you can actually say you have my back. I learned that the hard way. So I appreciate, I appreciate you for all that you've done. I appreciate it. You're welcome. So I would say, um, yeah, I'm like, we, we're not going to have to talk about that again, though. Um, okay. <laughs> that part. If anyone has, um, I guess I can't see if people have questions, huh? I'm trying to see uh, if anyone. Okay, so let me say this. If, if you're watching and if you have questions, can you... Send me a private message um, and then like we can answer it. But I just want you to know like it, not to say it's like a painless process because I have to ask you um, personal questions because it is the IRS. Like this is regarding money. You are legally held liable to pay this, this amount. Um, and then I have to ask intrusive questions to see if, if you're eligible for this offer, it's not to judge. Like at any point, let me ask you this. At any point when I was asking um, intrusive questions, but they're required questions, um, <laughs> did you, like, did I make you feel uncomfortable? Did you feel like, why is she all in my business? Like, what, girl? No, what? because when you, when you are trying to get something done, you have to remain transparent. Because obviously there were some, uh, they weren't bad mistakes. They were choices. And we all have choices to make when you have businesses, so on and so forth. So in order for someone to help you, you have to be open. You have to be an open book. And you were never intrusive. Uh, if you had to ask, you had to ask. I don't have any shame in what you had to ask me. Been there, done that. So there was nothing that um, you asked that was intrusive. Uh, no, nothing that was embarrassing. We talked about a few things, but it was never, we talked personal. So it obviously it was never, <laughs> if I, we can share personal things, it was never nothing about my taxes. That's just an open book. Obviously you, you didn't pay your taxes and you made a choice either to pay this and people who have businesses and making real good money, they know there's always something that's going to have to be left behind. And me, I chose my people come first. So that was the choice I made and 
Okay, now I have to pay back. Okay. Years later. Awesome. Cool. And then let me see. Um uh I'm just trying to see if anyone sent me like a private message and they may have a question. Uh Okay, so no one has any questions. So again, this is one of my clients, uh, again, former client and current tax prep client. Um, <laughs> but we resolved your tax problems. You are now sleeping at night, which is what yes. um, I aim it's to do. Is clients sleep, like get your rest, like get your rest. Let me take care of this part for you and you get your sleep. Um, financial problems should not keep us up at night. It should not, they should not kill us. Um, at all. There is a way to resolve uh, outstanding tax liabilities. And had you not been eligible for an offer, there are still other ways that you could have been helped. Um, and I would have helped you resolve your balance. So again, part of the consultation. So if anyone has a, a outstanding tax balance and they want to resolve that issue, it all starts with a consultation with me learning about your financial situation. Um, I do not answer private uh, DMs uh, regarding tax issues. I have a legit business. And so you would need to schedule a consultation via my website, which is p-ptc.com. That stands for Purpose and Passion Tax Company. Again, it's p-ptc.com, Purpose and Passion Tax Company. Um, it's .com and you would schedule a consultation for an hour. The consultation is 200 bucks um, as of today, June. 16th and we can take it from there thank you very much miss Didi. i appreciate you, you taking welcome. time out of your schedule and um speaking with me and just to help people know like i'm not a fraud that is not fake not. that offers but if they know me they know i don't deal with i'm not dealing with nothing fraud <laughs> so i appreciate you i appreciate you and i'm you need me for anything else you know i got you thank you, thank you thank you thank you all right, we're going to go ahead and end this. Have a good day. Okay, you too, honey. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.